Some years ago, I began to discuss the idea that we would be witnessing more Aurora events moving into the future. One video in particular that's over five years old now, back then I knew more and more people would be able to see these auroras as the sun became more active and because we would be getting hit with more exotic cosmic particles. Now last month we had some auroras hit the sky over several areas around the world. And with excellent timing, HARP, the High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program, was scheduled for some experimenting. So, as a result, some people were pointing to HARP once those auroras showed up, but the cause of those auroras was said to be caused by solar storms. So, this is not really a good time for HARP presenting this past event as a coincidence. A research facility that has been known to have the power to create earthquakes, auroras in the sky, is running experiments at the same time. We are having rare aurora anomalies. You know, there is a quote from author Wayne Dyer about coincidences. In mathematics, two angles that are said to coincide fit together perfectly. The word coincidence does not describe luck or mistakes. It describes that which fits together perfectly. Solar storm, not harp, creates intense auroral display. You know, this was published May 13th, 2024. The spectacular aurora sparked questions about possible connections to recent experiments by the High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program, or HARP. While HARP did operate a scientific campaign May 8th through the 10th, it had no connection to the solar storm, according to Jessica Matthews, HARP director. The campaign supported research proposals from the University of Alaska Fairbanks to study mechanisms for the detection of orbiting space debris. We have been responding to many inquiries from the media and the public, Matthews said. The HARP scientific experiments were in no way linked to the solar storm or high auroral activity seen around the globe. The May HARP campaign was scheduled about a month and a half before the geomagnetic storm. The timing was purely coincidental. Geomagnetic storms are unpredictable, with lead times before a solar event is detected from Earth measured in minutes, not months. Now that solar storm was one of the most powerful solar eruptions in 20 years. But they have been preparing for these events for a long time anyway. On May 8th, ground and space-based telescopes detected several massive solar eruptions aimed at Earth. So the Space Weather Prediction Center began to issue warnings. Billions of tons of solar plasma was released causing a severe geomagnetic storm, the worst since 2003. It had the potential to wreak havoc on global infrastructure, but mostly resulted in auroras. Airlines rerouted flights to avoid increased cosmic radiation at the poles. New Zealand's trans power shut down certain circuits. Minnesota power and other grids worldwide took similar precautions and just started turning things off. Although detailed impacts are often undisclosed due to confidentiality concerns among companies, so 
if there was any major damage that those solar storms caused, they wouldn't tell you about it. Satellite operators faced challenges. The International Space Station's crew avoided low shielded areas to minimize radiation exposure. The high shielded areas of the craft would be the sleeping quarters. UK-based company named Sen that streams 4K video from a satellite in low Earth orbit powered down its satellite to prevent damage, delaying observations of flooding in South America and wildfires in Canada. GPS signals were disrupted, affecting farmers in the Midwest. One South Dakota farmer's tractor drove in circles, and many reported GPS outages on social media. It seems that these disruptions in the internet and social media and certain things of that nature are going to increase, but I think people are going to be so used to it that they won't notice that anything is going on. The Hubble Space Telescope experienced accelerated orbital decay due to the storm. Now this storm did show that coordinated efforts in the public and private sectors are effective because most people were oblivious to anything strange happening other than the auroras. And as the sun approaches its peak activity in 2025, there is still more to come. So stay tuned. Now this month, folks, we've just had another blast from the sun hit us. Solar flare blast out strongest radiation storm since 2017. It's the sunspot region that just does not want to quit. Beastly sunspot AR 3697 has made headlines again just before it makes another exit. The sunspot region, formerly known as AR 3664, produced the historic geomagnetic storm that led to May's global auroras. On Saturday, June 8th, the sunspot fired off a M9.7 class solar flare, the second strongest type in the classification scale. The flare was powerful enough that it produced the strongest radiation storm since 2017, according to NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center. These types of events can pose a risk of impact to space launch operations and satellites and can also disrupt shortwave radio signals. So if you're hoping to catch a glimpse of the Aurora Borealis, tonight might be your best chance for a while. A few minor geomagnetic storms could light up the skies in about 10 states, but the opportunity to see the auroras from the US is fading with the best views moving further north by tomorrow evening. Today, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration announced that minor to moderate geomagnetic storms are expected through the night and into Tuesday. And these storms may bring a small solar radiation storm. For those in the U.S., this means there could be a chance to see the auroras in states along the Canadian border, including parts of Minnesota, Montana, North Dakota, Wisconsin, and the northern regions of Michigan, Washington, Idaho, South Dakota, and Maine. According to NOAA, almost all of Minnesota, Montana, and North Dakota could see the auroras, also northern Wisconsin and parts of Michigan. By Tuesday night, the best viewing spots will shift northward, limiting the Aurora's visibility to fewer states, primarily Montana, North Dakota, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. And this is going to continue up to at least 2025, at least. How come nobody is asking what in the world is going on? Why are we supposed to sit here like that's normal? And I've been saying this for a few years now, actually, that all this was going to happen, me and a bunch of other people, we knew the auroras would increase and people in different parts of the world would see them. We knew there would be more sky anomalies, more reasons than ever to keep aircraft grounded. 
hey, at least this they can't blame on climate change. Now, for the best viewing experience, I think it's between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. Ideally, around midnight is when you should be able to see the auroras the best. But it might be hard to see in the urban areas with a lot of lights. But if you're in the right area, grab your camera and see if you can get a few shots. But if you happen to miss it, no worries. There will be plenty more where those auroras came from. Now, when it comes to harp, here's the thing. They have this thing where they let everyone know when they are going to light up the sky with their experiments and research. And these events are usually localized and limited to areas around Alaska. I personally don't believe harp has the type of power to light up the sky in such a way that it's visible across the U.S. and other areas around the world and at Arctica. I just don't think HARP alone could produce both aurora rings at both poles of the planet and then some. But just like with CERN, when you tell people that you have the technology to do these things and then you do them, you can't blame them for being suspicious of HARP's activities. For example, just last year in November, their experiments focused on the ionosphere, the region of the atmosphere between 30 and 350 miles above the Earth's surface. The scientists investigated ionosphere mechanisms that cause optical emissions, such as auroras. They investigated how satellites could use plasma waves in the ionosphere for collision detection. Each day, the air glow was visible up to 300 miles from the Harp facility in Gakona. The site lay about 200 miles northwest of Anchorage and 230 miles southeast of Fairbanks, or about 300 to 350 kilometers. Now that's a pretty big area, but it's not the world. And they told everybody like it was a sight to see. They wanted people to see it. Harp created air glow by exciting electrons in Earth's ionosphere with on and off pulses of high frequency radio transmissions. HARP's ionospheric research instrument, a phased array of 180 high frequency antennas spread across 33 acres and that radiated 3.6 megawatts into the upper atmosphere and ionosphere at that time. The air glow, when it was visible, appeared as a faint red or possibly green patch because of the way the human eye operates. The air glow was easier to see when looking just to the side. So Harp created an air glow at a specific point in the sky. The angle of visibility for anyone wanting to observe it depended on their distance from Harp. Harp transmission frequencies varied, but according to them, it was between 2.8 and 10 megahertz. Actual transmission days and times were highly variable based on real-time ionospheric and or geomagnetic conditions, according to them. The recent solar storm involved massive coronal mass ejections, releasing billions of tons of solar plasma, causing geomagnetic disturbances far beyond the capacity of HARP's technology. I mean, the sun has a lot of freaking power. Go stand out in it. That's a cycling explosion heating you up. The thing is, they want us to believe that what the sun is doing is normal, but they aren't saying that either. Looking ahead, while Harp's role remains a subject of speculation, yes, folks, they are continuing to prepare for something big coming soon, it seems. Perhaps this is due to the sun's solar cycle and or something else out there that maybe has already made its way upon us. <laughs>